Hello dear friends, I am Cory and welcome to this new video in which I'm going to review the Darkstar Molten Metal Paints. So, Darkstar. Darkstar is an unknown brand of paint. Unfortunately, I would say, because I really love these paints and I don't understand why not a lot of people use them. I don't see people use these paints when doing maybe painting tutorial on YouTube or even when somebody decides to paint a specific type of miniature. I never, never saw this paint being used on a YouTube video and I don't understand why really. They do only paint specifically metallic paints. They have a range of paints, I think 26, 27 type of paints, but those paints are only metallic. The range of metallic is huge. I think it's the biggest range of metallics that you can actually find when looking for paint of this type. They have everything that you need from metal, steel, iron, silver, gold, copper, bronze, whatever metal you can imagine in form of acrylic paints, they have it. I have some of their paints and I have used them for more than a year now. When I have to paint true metallics on a miniature, Darkstar paints are my way to go. I will always use their paints. So without further ado, let's go to to the hobby table so that I can show you the Darkstar Molten Metal Acrylic Paints. Okay, so what you see right here is the entirety of the Dark Star paints that I have currently in my collection. Uh, don't worry, you won't need all of these paints. Uh, this is just me exaggerating just a little bit because um, I can't stop myself when I see something that I like. <laughs> okay, now before we go through the paints, we actually have to talk about the bottles themselves. Now, Dark Star bottles are drop bottles, like you see here, like the most known brand, like Vallejo uh, or Army Painter, and they come with a pretty heavy agitator inside. Here that the agitator is very heavy, very big, a very, very huge plus for me. I love when companies do this. I love, for example, Green Stuff do the same thing. Even Amo Mig, I believe, do the same thing. I wonder why Vallejo and Army Painter don't do that. Even Reaper does that, I actually believe. I would love to see Vallejo or Army Painter or even Citadel Games Workshop uh, putting agitator inside their paint because this makes our life of hobbyist more and more easy. So the agitator is very heavy. But also I have to talk about the plastic of this bottle, which is incredibly soft. And by that I really mean incredibly, amazingly soft. What I'm talking about here. You may have noticed that this bottle is actually different from the other. Why, you might ask? Well, long time ago, when I was putting the cap back onto the bottle, the bottle completely broke itself here. It just it just broke, it snapped into right on the, on the head and I had to save the paints. So I had to put it into this bottle right here, which is not very good, but it was the only thing that I had at the time. Maybe, maybe the bottle was actually defective because that was the only time that really happens to me. Keep in mind that I already have this paint for more than a year and that was the only occasion in which this, something like this happened. So maybe the bottle was defective. Anyway, I really suggest you go very easy with these bottles. Since the plastic is very soft, I don't know, maybe I was unlucky, maybe not. So be gentle, be kind, lovely, just to be sure. Now, let's go to see the paints itself. Let me set up the table so that I can show you better what are we dealing with. All right, so here I have some classic gold, some steel, some uh, graphite, and some lead belcher from Citadel, just to compare the two paints together. Now, first thing that you will notice about this paint is that they come out of the bottle already pretty, pretty thin. Now, I like to thin them a little bit, even though they are on a wet palette, but still, you don't have to thin them very much. Um, this is very good for the beginners because, well, uh, when you start painting, you don't actually know how much you have to thin your paint. Um, so this can be a very, very good thing for the beginners who want to maybe try and experiment with different paint that are not from Citadel or Vallejo, which are incredibly thick. So they are already pretty thin. And this may create 
a little bit of a problem. Let me show you what I am talking about. Now here on this knight, let's maybe try to paint his, uh, his giant, giant big sword, for example, here. Since these paints are very thin, they cover, well, they don't cover very, very much, uh, as you see. Well, they are very, very transparent. If you want to base coat with this paint, you will have to, to maybe paint two, three, even four layers of paint. This is a thing that I see happen to all of the paints that I have used from Darkstar. So you see here, this is the color graphite. Let's try with some lead belcher which is a little bit darker than the graphite, but still, we'll see what I'm talking about. So this was the graphite, you can still see in transparency the primer. Lead belcher. See, with just one coat of paint, and keep in mind that I have very, very thin down this lead belcher, it covers the blade pretty well. Okay, you see, you don't see the, you, you, you may still see some of the primer in transparency, but yet, see the difference? This is very, very shiny, by the way, compared to the lead belcher, which is very matte as a color, but still, you will see that the primer is still showing underneath this paint. So you may think that this paint aren't actually very good. Well, they're not very good in terms of base coating, but this is not what they are meant for, in my opinion. These paints, in my opinion, are meant to be paints that you use for your layering to a point in which you are almost kind of glazing with them. So, for example, I have this really, really fancy knight. I have base coated him with Vallejo gunmetal and the gold part of his armor are uh, painted in uh, Retributor armor from uh, Citadel. Then I have washed the uh, steel and metal part with uh, some thin down null oil. And the, the gold part I thinned in with some rifle and flesh shade. Both are from Citadel. I just thinned them down with a little bit of water and nothing more. Since these paints are very transparent, what they are very good for is actually layering. And as I said before, you are almost going to glaze with these paints due to their transparency. So, for example, you see the sword here, which is a very dark, dark blade. Let's take our graphite for before. Now, since this is very transparent, this is not a problem. Since the underneath paint is metallic, this will actually tint the blade and create this very nice effect which resemble true metals. Let's just compare the two again. You see the difference? This is very, very shiny, very, very bright. I really love the effect that this paint do when you're using them this way. Let's just try, maybe he does have a very shiny silvery blade. Maybe we want his armor to be a little bit more darker. So let's take some steel. Keep in mind, I, am, I haven't thinned this paint. I have just put it on my wet palette, which is more than enough if you, if you like your paint thin. Again, I would still thin a little bit this paint, but it will be okay just as it is. Let's, let's take, for example, his back. This way, you will just keep the armor very dark. But still, it would be very shiny. And it will be very beautiful to watch and see how, how you actually are able to build the, the metallic paints here. You see how, how nice the, the effect is very very nice thing is that since these paints are so so transparent um, again these are amazing for the beginners because when you wash your model 
it might happen when you're layering that you are going to cover some of the shades of the miniatures. This way, even if you go over the shades that you have created with your wash, you're not, you're not going to cover them completely. Like the foot here, you see that I am still putting a little bit of paint onto the shades, but you, you are still able to, to see them. Now let's try with some gold paint. I add classic gold here. It is my favorite out of all, out of the entire range. It, it is the one that I that I use the most. Let's paint his front plate, for example. Now this effect is even 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 better with golds. Just look how how much brighter this gold plate gets when you start layering with this color. Here, then let's paint the little shields that he have here. There you go. See the difference between the plate on the chest and the helm of this knight? This is incredibly shiny and still preserve all the shade that you see beneath. So basically this is the way that I would use this uh, kind of paint. You can also, well, agile lighting or even base coating if you want with this paint. Now, more obvious question, can you airbrush with this paint? Yes, of course you can. As a matter of fact, Darkstar also have their uh, branded thinner, but keep in mind these are acrylics. Every kind of thinner will be perfect for this kind of paint, even water if you want. But still, if you want their brand of thinner because maybe it is developed in a way that it works the best with this paint, they have their metal thinner. Can you mix this paint with other paints? Yes, absolutely. And they work amazingly in a very specific way. With this paint that I have here, which is the color silver. I really love this paint because you see it's completely white. It is a it's basically a white metallic and this is the perfect paint to use when you want to create something different like a colored metallics for example maybe you want for example a knight with a green armor or maybe you want a sword with a blue tint or maybe you have a vampire army so they all have a very red blood armor this paint is fantastic. As an example, I have a miniature that I have painted for this occasion. I have mixed with my silver just a tiny, tiny dot of my Vallejo Blue Violet from the model color line. And what I have obtained is this nice, nice, shiny purple armor. And you see here, you may remember this guy, uh, he's from the unboxing of the Heroic Fighter of the Known World. Anyway, I have mixed these two colors together, maybe five part silver and one part uh, or half part uh, blue violet from Vallejo, because you don't really need that much. You will still, you still want to preserve the metal flocks inside the paints. And you will obtain very nice effect with it. Now, you see this, this armor? is a very lovely metallic purple. I really like to work with this paint in this way. So, do you need all of the paint that I have shown you before? Absolutely not. You don't have to buy all of the paint that I have right here. If I may give you a little advice, maybe if you want to try these paints and start and work with them, you can buy, in my personal opinion, just three maybe four paints, it depends on how much fancy you are in your painting. I suggest you buy maybe these two metallic, the steel and the graphite, which are the two colors that I use the most. As a gold, I, I, I advise you to buy the classic gold or the royal gold. These are two very nice shades of gold. Personally, I would buy the classic gold, which is uh, the, the shiniest of the two. 
and well with this three paint you will basically do whatever you want with them these are you, this, with this three paint you will cover at least 90 percent of the metallics that you are going to paint out there on your miniatures uh, maybe if you feel a little bit fancy and want to do something a little bit more crazy because maybe your army is for example adeptus mechanicus from warhammer 40k maybe you want to buy uh, also copper because they use a lot of copper or maybe bronze if you paint the steampunk dwarf the from age of sigmar the cardron overlords that's the name with this paint you will basically do whatever you want maybe buy this paint and try them and see how do you feel with them um, and after that you can actually try to explore and do uh, crazy stuff buying the silver and mixing it with all of the other colors that you have all of the other acrylics that you have in your collection so that you can start doing crazy shade of metallic out there this is my very brief review of the dark star paints and this was my review of the Dark Star Metal Paint Sets. As I said you before, I have used these paints for more than a year now and I will keep using them in the future. Of course, this is not a sponsored video. I'm doing this video just because I think it's unfair that these paints are not very known into our hobby. I would like to see more people using Dark Star paint, specifically beginners, because I think that these paints are perfect for the people who are starting to paint their miniatures. So let me know down in the comment what you think of these paints, if you have already tried them, if you have already used them for a while like me, or if you're going to try them in the future and let me know how you find them, how you work with them, if you like them. Let me know everything you want down in the comments. And also leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos on my channel. Also down in the description, you will find the link to the Dark Star website and the link to my Instagram. If you also want to follow me there, I will really appreciate that. So this is the end of the video. Thank you very much, my friends. I am Corey. See you the next time.